three i vectors, you go three single unit vectors to the right, plus two j vectors, two units up. And it doesn't matter where you start. With vectors, we don't care where you start. We just care from where you start, where did you wind up. So you can take these vectors and slide them around anywhere in the Cartesian coordinate plane, and they mean the same thing. Okay? Any questions on I and J notation? No thoughts on that yet? No. Wait, Mr. B, yeah. random question. Can I go get my stuff? Because it's actually here. I'll hold yeah. it. Okay. Yeah, pass it off to Alvin. Does plus 2J okay. mean 2J vectors? Yes, 2J vectors. So what this so literally means... Did you put an arrow on top of it? Pardon? I did need an arrow on top of it. Thank you, Ramsey. So this literally means you start anywhere. I don't care where. This is what this vector is starting to do. From wherever you're standing right now, don't really do this. You're going to go three vectors to the right um, of one unit each, whatever that unit is. Three i's. And two j's. And either way, the end result is going to be that you'll have covered this path. Now, I keep describing vectors in terms of motion. That's going to be, could be a little bit inaccurate. I'm going to try and apply vector 3, 2 to this cart. I'm going to try and give it just the right amount of push to make it go 3 units that way and 2 units that way. How about the board is the x-axis? Okay, I'll probably fail, but are you ready? have to lift it. No. Alright, I'll probably fail, but I'm going to apply that force to this cart. I'm going to try and make it go... To Renee. Actually, you know what, to Renee, I'm probably going to try... Actually, I'm making it go negative 3, 2. Because I'm trying to make it go to my left and then up. So for where I'm standing, this would be the vector negative 3, 2. Boom. It's pretty good, actually. Yay. It's actually probably about negative 5, 3. But anyway. You should have used the tiles. I should have used the tiles. Yeah, by tiles, that was about negative 5, uh, positive 4. Well. <laughs> okay. Now, I'm going to apply the exact same vector to this lab table. Okay, here I am. I'm applying a vector of negative 5, positive 4 to this lab table. Good luck. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> Nothing. Not a darn thing. I'm getting a slight isometric exercise to my right calf and both biceps. That is all that is happening right now. And your intelligence level in my head. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Down, oh, yes. Down, down. Exactly. Now, <laughs> that's right. The point is, as far as the vector, if the vector is representing a force, okay? The vector is representing a force then the vector is the same whether the force causes something to happen or whether the force causes nothing to happen. That doesn't matter. Use the force. I know. <laughs> yes. Um, now, what if, now, if I'm representing a velocity with it, then in this case, there's a velocity vector. Is there a velocity vector in this case? Nope. No. No. Well, there is. It's, in, it's a non-existent one. It's a V equals zero. Could I say my respect for you is going down at a, going up at a negative 1j vector per second? Yes, rate. you could say that. You could, say, would, that? You could say that, yes. All right. Wow. Is it going left or right at all? No, no. <laughs> okay, just down. straight down. Okay, X -axis, good to know. Y axis. All right. Um, Yay. I said my first all right. physics insult. <laughs> um, I'm sure it won't be your last, Ramsey. Said Mr. <laughs> Quinn Jab. Now, okay. Vectors. <laughs> We're not allowed to say last names, so <laughs> That's right. everyone's Punjab. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> We're all an area between India and Pakistan, primarily known for being home to the Sikh religion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna get some hate. You're Captain Mongo. Okay, that's fine. Somebody was fine with that. Fine where that comes from. If you want to hear notes, then. All right. Here, He's Captain Mongo. Now, let's say I give you different information here. Okay? Every vector, no matter which way it goes, forms a right triangle. And you're going to have to keep track of your, of your Cartesian coordinate plane orientation. You're going to have to really keep track of to the right is positive, to the left is negative, up is positive, down is negative with these. But if instead of giving you the uh, i and j components, what if I give you the magnitude of the vector and the angle theta? If I give you the magnitude, for example, if I tell you that there's a vector of length 10 going up and to the right at an angle of 40 degrees. Oh, 
So we have to use Trig. I have to use Trig. How can you... Now, this Trig is fairly simple, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. And really, at this point, you got to know your Sokotoa. But you got to know your Sokotoa really, really well. So what you have to do... At least if you're in pre-cal, this should come a little more quickly. This is fairly simple. How do I describe this vector? Well, I would describe it... Sine. How would you describe this height in terms of the hypotenuse and that angle? Sine of 40. Sine of 40 equals... This over 10, right? X, yeah, X over, over 10. 10. Okay, so what is X going to equal? What is this? Uh, oh, the... N? He's going to have it I want you to get into. Sine over... Sine of... Wait, sorry. No, no, no. 10 you have sine to rearrange 40. It. She's got it. Yeah, that's it. She's got it. Okay, so if X over 10 equals sine 40 when you rearrange it, this height is always going to be... Whoops, does the height come first? Which comes first, the side or the height? The side. The side. Bottom. And what do you think the bottom is going to be? If this is 10 sine 40, what's the bottom going to be? The adjacent side of the triangle. Cosine B over 10. <clears throat> yes, yeah, so, so B is just going to be 10 what? You guys just, Sarah just did it with this 10 one. 10 cosine 40. Excellent. So Wait, 10 cosine 40. So, so B is the... Y is the x-axis and h is the y-axis? Correct. Correct. Okay. So I, just, I was just using base and height for the triangle. So the base, the x part, is going to be 10 cosine 40, and the y part is going to be 10 sine 40. 10 sine 40. One way you can help remember which is which, remember on the uh, unit circle, x is always cosine and y is always sine. Now sometimes you can leave the answer this way. If all I say is give me the horizontal and vertical components of this vector, and I don't say anything else, don't waste time. Just write 10 cosine 40, 10 sine 40. If I say write it to three significant digits, then you've got to pull out your calculator and actually get me the values. Do 10 sine 40. Yeah. 10 cosine 40. Yeah. So yeah. this will always be the x and y. These will always be the components of the vectors. Um, vectors are often used to represent gravity. Good job blowing on me. <laughs> Mrs. Punjab is punching me. What, it's it's a sitcom. It's you know life with Mr. and Mrs. Punjab. That's fantastic. <laughs> Captain Mondingo. <laughs> All right. Okay. So any questions on how you find the horizontal and vertical components given the magnitude and the angle? That already. No questions. Did you want to do no questions. Another... Wait. And how would you graph that though? I, graph. That really depends. Because if I if I just say graph this vector. I say graph this vector. I can draw a graph. Remember, location is anywhere. So if I don't give you any other information and I say graph that vector. You basically just have to know that you have a slope of, of 40 degrees. Well, you have to have an 40 degrees and 10 units. Yeah. So anywhere you can pick anywhere you want to start. And as long as the angle with the horizontal is 40 and the length is 10, you have graphed that vector. And you can start here, 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 uh, here, anywhere. Do we have to, like, 10 going at a slope of 4? Oh. So the slope is, no. Slope is the tangent of 40. Would Remember I kept saying on the unit circle, yeah. slope is the same as tangent? So if you actually want to know the slope of that Which vector? you have to know, because you wouldn't be able to graph it without that. Uh, you, could, you could use a protractor and a ruler instead of the dots on the plane. I want to see the protractor. No, I'm probably going to have you estimate it, or I'm probably going to have you... Or I, you know what I would do in a physics class, what I would do on a calculator, on an exam where you have a calculator, Ramsey? I would get these decimals, and I would start at a point, and I would go that many decimals over, and then that many decimals up. Yeah. That's what I would do. It's not the only way. You could find the slope okay. and measure it. Okay. <laughs> All right, so that's... Um, um, there's some questions in the homework tonight that ask you to basically think about triangles. I don't want to go over an example of every one of them. I'm trying to, I just want to give you enough information to like be able to figure it out. I actually want you to have to think a little bit. May I erase this bit of vector information? Sure. Yes, you just want to figure it out. You're not going to give us enough info? No, I'm going to give, there's enough info there, but it's like, it's stuff like if you change this about a vector, what happens? If you change this about a vector, what happens? And I want you to think about your triangle knowledge. But there's one other thing I do want to tell you here. One other bit of information, um, and that is, <clears throat> what's the next thing I want to tell you about this? Um,
Okay, give him the other uh, direction. Here you go, Mr. Quinzel. Okay. What is the magnitude and direction of the vector? Um, what is the magnitude? Stop, don't whisper into that. It's louder on that microphone than anything I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> what is the magnitude and direction of the vector negative 3, <laughs> comma 4? Oh, and this, uh, yeah, I'll tell you, I need to give you one more notation that your book uses. So magnitude is the slope. No, magnitude is the size. Is the size. And direction in this case is going to be, there's a couple ways to say it. This is going to be an angle. Okay, first off, let's go ahead and start this one at the origin for simplicity. Because you guys are used to the unit circle. We don't have to, but let's. Negative 3, 4 should look something like that. It's got its tail at the origin and its tip where the arrow is up there. Is that a good drawing of negative 3, 4? No. Okay, glad we yes. got it. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, now, there's a couple things. For the magnitude, how would you find the magnitude of the vector? Ask you. Uh, Ask me. It's you count the blocks. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me give you some notation mixed into this example, okay? First off, I'm going to call this vector A, with the arrow over it, because this is what your physics book does. I'm going to say A is negative 3 comma 4. Now, magnitude has an interesting Distance symbol. formula. You're close. Distance Hold on. No, it's true. What do you mean close? Hold on a sec. Fine. Magnitude gets a symbol similar to absolute value. Magnitude means you use a double absolute value sign. And that tells you... And that means, how big is the vector? What is its actual magnitude? Now, Ramsey, what were you saying? What shape does this make? A triangle. 